So as we continue our conversation this week, we continue to work on the invitation. It's been this idea of of understanding that we have an opportunity to invite other people to come and find out about the good news of Jesus Christ like we have. And we started by recognizing that everybody that we run into, everybody, including ourselves, have this desire to belong. Remember, we talked about that the first week, and yet they don't know that they're welcome. They don't know that they're invited to the church. And then last week, we talked a little bit from our perspective to talk about the adventure that it is here at First Church and in our Christian life walking together. It really is an adventure, especially after Milton. Amen? It was that type of thing. But today may be my favorite topic for the year. After Helene and after Milton, it almost put tears in my eyes to hear this invitation from God and all that it means. Today, it's the invitation to rest. And boy, do we need that. Let's pray. God, as we come before you today, what a gift to have the ability to share our life with you, especially as you call us into this place and and hear your words and your way. May they be a comfort to us, a direction for us, and a dedication to us in all that we do, that we would go forth from this place and bring others to the realization of how wonderful it is to be loved by you. In Jesus, we pray these things. Amen. So we're going to do a little neighbor chat again. I'm going to have you talk to your neighbors, even if you don't know them, that's okay. I just want you to mention a time, and think about a time about well, an invitation. What invitations worked for you in your life? Do you remember somebody asking you to do something? Was it a date, a dinner, a dance, a party, a wedding? What made it special that you remember it? Go ahead, turn to your neighbors and So anybody want to tell me what made it special, the invitation, or what the invitation was? Anybody have anything? Suzanne? Oh. Oh, wow, that's very cool. I was actually invited to this church by the bishop. (laughs) (laughs) Bill? Awesome. Awesome. Anybody else? It's pretty cool to those invitations are the exciting things they just hit the spot sometimes and and or maybe it's the person who asked you or or maybe it's the sincerity of the asking would you like to come to church today that what makes today's invitation so special to me is the care and the love that are bursting through the words from our scripture passage god's invitation to rest is out of love god loves us that much that god says come and I will give you rest. When I was preparing this series, which now seems like a lifetime ago, uh, I was struck by the fact that we are all weary and trying to carry on and carry the world on our backs. Good news. God has other plans. God wants to carry the weight that we might be carrying. Always. That's good news, isn't it? 
Before we get into the Matthew passage from today, let's go back to Isaiah. I was drawn to Isaiah 55 when I was preparing this series, and it's written after the exile and before uh, of the exile of God's people and then leading to their return to Jerusalem. They needed rest. And Isaiah 55 begins with the wide hospitality of God. Here everyone who thirsts. Come to the waters, and you have no money. Come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. We don't have to be anyone. We don't have to have anything. We just have to come. It's, it's that in this what's the catch world that we live in, it is a blessing. It is a soothing Listen to our political ads right now, right? We, we hear uh, so flashy and cut and pasted to say exactly what they want to say, to tell us everything that's wrong with the other candidate, and it seems so much of it is crafted, crafted in even lies. So I can't help but thinking, what's the catch? What is the truth? And here's the problem. Cynicism erodes our trust. But for God, the truth is in the Word. The Word made fresh, the flesh. The Word is in the Word. Just come. No ifs, ands, or buts. No catches, no costs. Just rest is available for us. Then there's a bit of correction. In verse 2, it says, Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your earnings for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. And God isn't talking about bread. God is, it's really an imagery for God. God is talking about sustenance. God is saying what the world feeds isn't going to work. Amen? But we've been conditioned to bite, haven't we? Why else would we have so many commercials and so many things telling us what we should have? A better this, a better that, more of something, the brand new thing. No matter what it is, it won't ever satisfy. Because there'll be something new. There'll be something better, always. But putting our trust in God will. Verse 3, incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant. How long is the covenant? Everlasting. This was a new start for the Hebrew people. Their exile was over and God made a new, maybe better to say a fresh covenant with them. And God will give us that new start as well. Listen. Come to me. We can start afresh. I don't know, those words seem even more important after Milton and those of you that have lost everything once again to know that God is right there saying, it's okay. We can start afresh. And the word is we that's important. In verse 5, God calls us to invite others to this rest as well. Here, nations isn't referring to countries, but referring to groups of people we do not know. The people who we pass by but have no relationship with. They will want what we have. And I think especially now. Listen to verse 5. Now you, can, you shall call nations or peoples that you do not know, and peoples that you do not know you shall run to because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for He has glorified you. He's given us this gift. I've said this over and over, I think, but uh, let me say it again. He's given us this gift, but it's not a gift unless we share it beyond ourselves. Amen? And that's what he's calling us to do. God has called us. Let's not waste it. Go on to verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord 
that He may have mercy on them and to our God, for He will abundantly pardon. People need to know that's the gift. It's not judgment waiting. It is grace. Amen? Have you felt the grace? Yes, we've all felt it. We know what it's like. Remember last week when I said, don't presume how people respond? Just, we just invite. Why? Because that's God's mission. God's given us this gift for, so that we can give it to others. For my thoughts, verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, or your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they've watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose and succeed in the thing which I sent it. We are carrying that word out into the world, and people need to hear this. They need to know that in the middle of the rain that has come, and well, no snow here, let's be honest, we're in Florida, but, but come, the, these things that come down, even though they come down, God's got a plan, and God is going to take us somewhere special. And we just have to know that. Not just on the bright, sunny days, but on the rainy days when you blessed people that are present here and you dry ones there, that God is blessing us always and everywhere. With that in mind, we gladly go invite others. We remember how God has given us rest and good news and given us a will to spread that. And it says in verse 12, in the close of this passage from 55, for you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. Where do you think he's sending us? To go invite people, amen? You shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. In the mountains and the hills before you shall burst in song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. This is the loving invitation of God to invite us into a relationship of love. That's what this verse and this passage is all about. Isn't it an awesome passage? How many, how many are going to look at Isaiah 55 today? Do I have one? Do I have two? All right, I've got a couple. All right, now you're committed. Okay, good. But wait, there's more. <laughs> the Greek word for rest, anapal, also means refresh and reconcile. What God is offering us is more than rest. It is to refresh us as well, to give us that boost in life. Anybody need a boost? If you worked on pumpkins yesterday, you need a boost. Let me tell you, I know that's, that's the way it works. Jeremiah 31, 25 says, I will satisfy the weary and all who are faint, I will replenish. God wants us to come so that we, he can replenish our lives. The, that rest is active in our passage today when we read, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And then it goes on to say, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This, this is resting on Jesus. You know, I've talked about it before, but the way that yoke are gathered, are yoked together, the ox are yoked together is by, there's an experienced, stronger ox that is taking the burden of most of the weight. And the experienced ox will take that weight and, and lead the inexperienced until it grows in strength and experience. God will take the weight of our burden. God will take the weight of the burden and lead us and show us the way so that we can bear this world that we live in. This is what the world needs. Isaiah 40, 29 says, He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. God refreshes us for purpose when we rest. So, so not only do we get rest, we get refreshment and, and, and given us that 
that refreshment so that we can continue in the purpose of our lives. I think that is part of that my ways are not your ways that really kind of stands out. We hear the word rest and just think, well, I could take a nap now because God's going to be there. But God has more than involved in that. I think God loves us so much that come and get rest and I will refresh you so it will go well with us. And when we come to God, it is reconciliation. So rest also brings reconciliation with God. By the grace of Christ, we are reconciled to God through Christ. So God offers rest, but it is rest, refresh, and reconcile to God. Why? Because God loves us that much. In fact, in fact, sometimes God makes us rest. Psalm 23, 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What's it say? He makes me lie down in green pastures. It's more than an invite. God makes us lie down in green pastures, not to be a burdensome deity, but because God loves us. We need rest. That is true. Amen? We need rest, sometimes more than others, and I think always more than we realize. Not only a physical rest, Sometimes that's the easy one, but sometimes also a mental rest. First Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Gosh, yeah, sometimes the body feels worn out, but the heart and the soul, it gets weary, doesn't it? And we need to know there's something better out there. Because we're being deluged with everything but. Rest is an interesting word in our language as well. It can mean sitting back and relaxing or like sleeping. That's my favorite. Rest can also mean support, like resting our feet on a stool. It can also mean a grounding for us, like our country rests on the Constitution of the United States. Everyone on a good day, needs rest more than they know. And when we invite someone to this life we have, I believe God is crafty. I'm almost afraid to use that word, but I think God's being crafty. God's way is more than rest. Yes, it's a relief or relaxing, but isn't it all three? Isn't it rest for the tired souls? Isn't it refreshment to face this world? And isn't it being grounded once again in Christ? Ephesians 3, 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. That's what God has to offer us when he says, come to me. That's what God offers. Open wide arms to the world. There's no one God wants to leave out. How can we not go in joy knowing what Christ has given us, and offer an invitation to us so others may com- comfort, rest, and refreshment and a new life in Christ. That's what God has for them as well. So rest up, my brothers and sisters. Then let's go and invite the world to rest, refresh, and reconcile in God's love. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.